All right, welcome back to another rhythm challenge. So again, here you what you want to do is name the following rhythm, choosing the best answer. Okay, so our answer choices here are sinus bradycardia, junctional rhythm, junctional bradycardia, and ventricular rhythm. All right, again we have rhythm strips here. Okay, from our standard 12 lead ECG, you have lead two, an inferior limb lead. And then you have lead V1, one of our right precordial leads. Down here, you have an enlarged portion of those same rhythm strips to help you see some of those smaller boxes if that helps you, okay? So what I want you to do is pause the video, take a few moments to go through it yourself, choose an answer. When you're ready, restart the video and we'll go through it together. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to uh, give it a shot and see if you, let's see if you got the right answer all right so again we want to walk through each one and make sure that we understand why each answer choice is correct or not all right so there's only one answer choice all right so let's go through this here okay so our first uh answer choice is sinus bradycardia all right and some things you want to know about sinus bradycardia is that there's p waves present okay we also want to know that it is a rate that's less than 60 beats per minute. It's a regular rhythm, okay? And when we talk about these P waves being present, they tend to be upright in lead two, so we have lead two here, okay? And then we see biphasic uh, P waves, okay? So in lead two, you may see upright P waves, and then in V1, you may see positive, negative uh, biphasic P waves, okay? Now, if you look here, there's actually no P waves, okay? Whether you look throughout this, all right, no P waves. Same thing down here. This is not a P wave there, okay? And I just X'd out of it, but it's not. All right, so no P waves present. So that means that this answer choice is not correct, all right? So that hopefully narrows it down. Now, how about junctional rhythm? Well, in junctional rhythm, there are no P waves, okay? Same thing with this junctional uh, bradycardia, okay? The junctional rhythm has a rate between 40 and 60 beats per minute, okay? A junctional bradycardia is when it's below 40 beats per minute, okay? Both of these are regular rhythms, okay? And then we tend to have narrow QRS complexes with both of these. And let's talk about ventricular rhythm while we're at it. So again, no P waves, okay? I mean, with the junctional and the ventricular rhythms, you can't have P waves if you have retrograde conduction, but typically we don't see that, and uh, they're not seen here, so we'll say no P waves for that. Oh, a ventricular rhythm has a rate between 20 and 40 beats per minute. Typically a regular rhythm, okay? And it has wide QRS complexes, okay? So one thing that's differentiating that from the two above, okay? So all of them have no P waves, B, C, and D, okay? So rates can help differentiate them. So let's find the rate here, okay? So remember, if you look here, notice that we have a regular rhythm, meaning that from one R wave to the next, if you measure all these out, so you would see that these are all the same intervals. These R to R intervals, we call them, okay? So R to R intervals are all the same. So we have a regular rhythm, but that doesn't help us because so no P waves in all three and they're all regular. So that doesn't differentiate it. Now let's find the rate, okay? Remember we're dealing with a standard ECG. So we know that from beginning all the way out to the end here is 10 seconds. 10 seconds times six is 60 seconds, which is one minute. So we, multi we find the number of complexes. We can use the T waves or the QRS complexes. There's no P waves, so we can't find an atrial rate. So we'll find the number of QRS complexes, multiply it by six, and that'll give us an estimate in beats per minute. So let's do that. We have one here, so that's one. This is two, three, four, five, six. So our rate is about six. So six times six, is 36 beats per minute, all right? So that's what we have. And if you see that, you'll notice that our junctional rhythm had a rate, right, between 40 and 60. So we can cross that one out because it doesn't meet that criteria, okay? So it doesn't meet it for sinus rhythm, it doesn't meet this, this. It does have a regular rhythm, but there's no P waves, okay? So I've circled the things that it has not met. There are narrow QRS complexes, okay? So notice these QRS complexes from beginning 
all the way to the end is less than 120 milliseconds. And that should make it clear that this last one here, wide QRS complexes, is the thing that differentiates it from the others, okay? So wide is not correct here. So that means that this is not a ventricular rhythm despite it having a rate in that range, okay, and being a regular rhythm. So actually we've already got to the answer which is C, a junctional bradycardia, okay? So hopefully that makes sense, okay? Sinus bradycardia is incorrect. The rate is there, okay? Uh, so the rate is correct, excuse me. It is less than 60 beats per minute. Um, but there are no P waves, okay? So that's something that should automatically rule that out. The junctional rhythm um, is not correct because the rate is less than 40 beats per minute. Um, so that's the main thing there. That's pretty much what separates both B and C, okay, is the rate, all right? Remember with junctional rhythms, we can go through these. When it's a bradycardia, it's less than 40 beats per minute. When it's a junctional rhythm, it's 40 to 60 beats per minute. When you have an accelerated junctional rhythm, it's between 60 and 100 beats per minute. And when you have a junctional tachycardia, it's over 100 beats per minute, okay? So as we can see, we're fitting that depiction right here, the description of junctional bradycardia, okay? And separating from the ventricular rhythm, ventricular rhythms, you have slow to slow cell depolarization in the ventricles, and uh, you have delay of that intraventricular conduction. That tends to be where we have those wide QRS complexes, which we don't see here. So again, the best choice here, best the answer here is junctional bradycardia. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something.